Hello, I just want to say thank you for your time. I appreciate you watching this. And this may seem repetitive, but I will be describing our DIY synthesis of drugs. More specifically, acetaminophen from our starting material that was provided, p -aminophenyl. So another name for acetaminophen is paracetamol. There's many names. It's a common drug used to reduce pain and fever. We've all probably taken it for headaches, toothaches, muscle aches, and menstrual pains. They're the worst. So this is definitely a method that a lot of people have used. And it changes the way the body senses pain and cools the body. The effects of the drug on the central nervous system increases an individual's pain threshold. And acetaminophen also acts on the brain's temperature regulating center. This is how it's able to reduce fe uh, fever. I didn't know this at first. I'm a neuroscience major, so you think I would know a little bit more about the mechanisms, but I guess I didn't. Interesting fact here is that acetaminophen was an accidental discovery made in the late 19th century. The discovery came after the wrong chemical, acetanilide, was administered to a patient who had intestinal parasites. I can't even imagine what that would feel like. Although the parasites remain, the patient's fever was reduced. And then it wasn't until 1955 when acetaminophen sales began in the United States under the common name of Tylenol. So with this synthesis, there were some primary, primary objectives. And basically, to the design of synthesis of acetaminophen is based on a modern approach of choosing the right synthetic route and using methods necessary for the characterization of the resulting pharmaceutical. So how do we go about this? It took a lot of research and literature reviews to see which route's the best and what materials are we going to use. p aminophenol was already given to us and so my choice to catalyze this would be acetic anhydride. So acetaminophen is made by reacting p aminophenol with acetic anhydride as stated. This reaction forms the amide bond and acetic acid as a byproduct, or ethnoic acid is another name for it. <clears throat> when the reaction is complete, the paracetamol is then isolated and purified, so that's the basics of it. The mechanism of action is the lone pair of electrons on the amine, or amine, I'm sorry, of p-aminophenol attacks the carbon-oxygen double bond of acetic anhydride, causing it to break. Nitrogen has a positive charge, but regains electrons by losing a proton. The negative charge on the oxygen comes back in to reform the carbon-oxygen double bond. This causes the other carbon-oxygen single bond to break. The result is an amide bond formation and a carboxylic acid byproduct. And then this just shows the, the mechanism of action to the right. So I broke mine down into three parts. And... Um, it seemed the simplest method. There are other routes you can take. There's two steps, three steps, but for this, it's three parts. Um, part one is creating the crude acetaminophen. Just a brief overview, 1.5 grams of our starting material was combined with 3 mLs of water and 4 mLs of acetic anhydride. These are all rough estimates. My protocols did call for specific numbers, but when we're in the lab, it was a lot of eyeballing. So this is where the um, amine group of p aminophenol is being acetylated by acetic anhydride, and we used heat to form an amide functional group. So once this mixture cooled, it was allowed to crystallize. So this took maybe about 10 minutes or so where we let it boil, not boil, but heat up, and then we'll let it cool. So crystallization is being used as a purification technique to separate the product from the impurities. Part two was the isolation of crude acetaminophen from the starting material. <clears throat> from that acetic anhydride. So this step was completed by vacuum filtration. This is pictured to the right here. This is our apparatus, our setup. So there are two main advantages that I um, saw with using vacuum filtration. The suction filtration is much faster than gravity, taking less time and with a good seal and good vacuum source, you got it. And also suction filtration is more efficient at removing residual liquid, leading to a pure solid. This is especially important in crystallization as the liquid may contain soluble impurities which could absorb back into the solid surface when the solvent evaporates. However, this method is best with large crystals. And as I've talked to friends and their, how their synthesis went and the products they had, not everyone had large crystals. Some almost look, I would describe it as fairy dust in a way. So part three, I um, was a little bit different for mine than others where I went ahead and recrystallized the product. So this is um, purification of acetaminophen by recrystallization. 
So recrystallization is one of the most common techniques used for purifying drug solids specifically. And the crude acetaminophen and water were combined into a conical flask and heated by hot plate. So acetaminophen is not soluble in cold water, but it is when the solvent's hot. So that's what the purpose of heating this was. Any impurities will dissolve in hot water. And when everything has dissolved, the solution is cooled. Paracetamol will crystallize, but the impurities will remain dissolved. So we'll have two separate entities here. And so once I let this cooled, you made the comment, I'm talking to you directly, Carol, but you made the comment that you could see the um, crystals forming right before your eyes. And I just, I was like, I don't see anything. I'm not sure what you're talking about. And it took me to um, re look at this video again that I took. It's very brief. But when I time lapse, I'm like, oh, okay, I kind of see, well, I definitely see what you were talking about. So I'll go ahead and play this. It's just a little five second clip of the crystals forming in a time lapse. So here you can see them growing and I just kind of reversed it as well. Um, pretty amazing. I didn't think I was going to see it like that. And these huge crystals are forming, which I was very proud of. It wasn't really something I had thought of before the experiment and when looking into my synthesis. But now that we're here, I can see the importance of having larger crystals and understanding that larger crystals also mean that there are less impurities in those as well. So results, um, I don't know how to do a drum roll sound effect on the iPad. I don't think I can. So I think you get the gist of what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> Our product. So to the left is what my final end product was. Very large crystals. This, these look like they're photogenic. Like this was a setup, honestly. Um, the end product weight was 1.2 grams. However, the theoretical yield that was determined before the synthesis was 2.1 grams. The percent error was determined to be 42%. And we'll talk more about what could have went wrong when we talk about error analysis. <clears throat> so to characterize our acetaminophen and to make sure that that is what we actually synthesize, um, we had to do melting point, determine the melting point of our product. And so based off previous literature, it was determined that between 169 and 170 degrees Celsius is the melting point of acetaminophen. Once this was performed, the value observed was 169.8. So the pure value is definitely within this range. I'm pretty proud of that as well. And this helps us identify the product as acetaminophen. So to further characterize our acetaminophen, we used IR. So the following IR chart shows the NH um, amide band near 3000 region um, broadband of our OH that is uh, to the right of that and some other important bands that appear are the amide carbonyl band at 1600 and the NH band at 1500. Um, the bottom picture would be my reference point. So comparing the two, they look very similar. So that also gives me more confidence in that I actually did synthesize acetaminophen. So to discuss the results and what I kind of took away from this, definitely looking at the source of errors, I can see why our theoretical yield and our um, actually observed quantity that we got were so different. A source of error that could have occurred was in the transfer of samples from one vessel to another. There was a lot of um, putting it on a watch glass, back into a tube, especially with the recrystallization step, as well as, um, having excess water and things so transferring these samples could definitely um have led to less product being um formed so essentially to solve this a more thorough practice of quantitative transfer samples could be conducted to increase the yield and prevent the loss of sample during transferring and there was quite a lot in this protocol and although we didn't deviate too much from the procedure we definitely eyeballed quite a lot. Um, there were parts taken out, like I didn't use the charcoal to further purify the product, which wasn't necessary in this case. Um, but mainly the time constraint could have led to a possible source of error. So the heating and cooling stages were compromised, resulting in less time for precipitation and recrystallization. Um, this may have resulted in an incomplete reaction, forcing the yield to significantly decrease it's better to allow the most time for this precipitation to occur and for these crystals to recrystallize so by heating um by 
making this process a little bit faster, we don't get the full product. So in conclusion, this was definitely a huge learning experience. I've taken labs every semester and I've never had something so hands-on and something so much where I've had to design my own protocol, which I really wish you had more of an introduction to sooner, especially freshman year. My personal goal was to connect this synthesis to lecture and we focused a lot on mechanisms. They were a huge part of synthesis in OCHEM 2. So being able to describe in my own way the mechanism of action that was going on to form acetaminophen was a big takeaway from this. And I've also um, come to the conclusion that lab may not be my area of interest, but it's the best way to experience chemistry in context. It's really hard for me to visualize anything chemistry. I mean, it just doesn't click right away like biology does. I'm an anatomy person. I can pick point, pinpoint things right there in front of my face. But on a molecular level, this is not the case. <clears throat> Excuse me. But overall, I may not see the bonds breaking and forming, but being able to see the formation of the crystals like in that video, which was once a powder and now we have these large structures, it clearly tells me that there's more than what meets the eye. And it definitely gave me the opportunity to experience this, as well as understand the literature review that goes into this and the time to do things a certain way because things have to go in a certain order. Um, this seems like a lot of maybe more general chemistry for some because this may be an easier synthesis than others. So I can only imagine what would it take to do more like harder synthesis, especially when you're forming more complicated drugs like extended release medications or um, dissolving tablets. Like acetaminophen actually comes in a dissolving tab tablet form and that comes from mixing the, the starting compound with citric acid. So when that when those two form in water, carbon dioxide and other materials form that bubbly sensation and it, it dissolves in water. So there's a lot more things that can go into making acetaminophen and we only kind of touched the basics of it, but it was definitely a learning experience here. So I appreciate your time and I definitely enjoy this semester. You made OCHEM a lot less scary and I hope you enjoy the rest of your year. Thank you.